Hi, how are you? This is Dr. Damaris Maria Grossman, and this is the Mindfully Integrative Show. And today we have a wonderful guest doing a mindful chat. Her name is Dr. Marnie Hill Fodero, and she has years of experience as an author, as a teacher, as a speaker, and an educator. So there's many things that she is going to speak with you. And I love just her website alone is God came to my garage sale. So I want you to know and find more about her because she also has written many of books. So thank you so much for being on the show, Dr. Marnie. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, I really appreciate it. So as I kind of tell those on the show, just um, a little fun fact that someone may not know about you because you are, you know, postdoctoral Harvard, you know, uh, you know, you've done so much, you're educated, highly educated, and also uh, well-renowned. So please talk um, to those in the, um, about your story and just a small little fun fact before we go into it. Let's see a fun fact about me. <laughs> I really have put a lot out there. Um, I would say now that I have moved to the Caribbean, oh, that's um, cool. Where are yeah, the Caribbean? At, you know, I'm in St. Croix in the U S wow. Virgin islands. That sounds beautiful. I've, I've lived here for three years. Um, but never in my life would I think that I would be skilled at catching boa constrictors. What? So we have, and they're not native to our island, but we certainly have them um, here in abundance. And um, even though they're not venomous, which is nice, they still can bite and of course constrict. And it's just no fun to have a snake around your house. So um, yeah. I have gotten pretty good at catching boa constrictors. Oh my, do you have like, a, you know, do you have like a wrangler, like a thing, like a, I have, um, a, we call them snake tongs. Oh and, my God. Um, because where I live is on many acres in the rainforest. We have numerous snake tongs in various <sighs> locations. Um, so that, you hmm. know, if I come across one, you know, I can, I can catch it. And, you know, there are a couple people on the Island that are interested in, um, having them, um, as a, um, like dinner, <laughs> oh. but, I also call the DPNR guy. There's a, there's, we call him the snake whisperer, but he comes in from St. Croix snakes and, and gets them because he collects the data and, and researches them and, um, you know, trying to help eradicate them from our Island. But anyway, that's so my many. fun fact. We have, wow, so that's a pretty yeah. big one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've gosh. actually caught, um, so we've had 20 in the oh, three God. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. So something I, that's a fun fact, I guess how, they I don't know how in the fun house? it is. What I don't, we keep our doors closed. So, okay. Okay. so, but they're definitely right around. They, they enjoy our gardens and our birds and. Oh yeah. my. Oh no. Oh my so that's my you, fun fact. Oh, you know, wow, that, you move to the islands to be more relaxed. I don't know. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. There. I'm okay. <laughs> I, I appreciate nature. I think that, you know, being in nature, is just so very healing on so many different levels. So, oh. yeah. So let's talk about you. You have um, a wealth of, you know, history and, you know, this show is really about um, integration of health and, and your journey, um, obviously as an educator. And so how, you know, let's talk about your story and, and um, how you've kind of come to where you are now. Sure. Well, just, you know, without going into too much detail, because I have talked about my story and what has led me to write my books. Um, but in, in keeping with integrative health, which, yeah. um, you know, I really support, um, especially just natural ways of healing yourself. One thing I'd like to point out is um, so many people don't realize that if we have surrounded ourselves whether we know it or not, with toxic individuals or toxic situation, that can actually, that stress um, can manifest itself in your body and could, you know, where you are end up with, um, you know, physical ailments or autoimmune diseases. And of course, so many um so many responses are, oh, pop a pill for this, pop a pill for that, when right. really there are so many other things that you can do. And one of them is realizing, taking, taking a look at yourself and look at your life and look at your relationships, your family, your partnerships, um, your, your neighbors, your work 
colleagues, look at situations and people, you know, really do some reflection and try to decide how healthy these relationships or situations are. Because you might find that some of them are not as healthy as you think, where you could be mm-hmm. trauma bonded with another person mm-hmm. because you've known them for years and you just always thought they had your back or, you know, you might wake up one day and find um, evidence to show that, you know, the person you are in a partnership with doesn't have the same values as you do um, with regards to honesty or fidelity or you know, mm-hmm. money or whatever it is. And so, you know, you've got to make some very tough decisions um, about whether to stay or go or how to, you know, alter your interaction so that you are in a healthy state mentally. Um, so, and I had to do that. Um, and as a result, I left a marriage after 27 years. I left uh, my American dream, mm-hmm. um, which really was myself living in a false reality with regards to uh, what I thought I was living. You know, definitely my career as a teacher, that was the real deal. And I really enjoyed that and and saw that through till I retired. But I did have to make some decisions and they were really hard decisions. And even after you make those initial decisions, there's a lot of repercussions and fallout that come sometimes years after you make these decisions. And then you have to kind of analyze, reanalyze where you are at with some people in your life or situations in your life and make another round of of possible changes just to kind of protect yourself. But I I will say, you know, is as tough as that, I would say emotional, spiritual healing journey was, um, and, and there's a lot of losses and there's a lot of pain. Um, When you can get through that and come out the other side, you'll find that emotionally and physically, you are in optimum health. And, you know, so it really, no one else can really do this for you. You have to do this for yourself. Yeah, listen to podcasts, read some books, get some ideas, talk to different people. But the, the final choice is really yours and how you want to conduct your life. And um, I'm just, you know, I'm so glad I, I've always had a positive outlook. I've always believed that love and compassion and knowledge can really steer us in a positive way. And, and so I, I, I had a foundation that really was conducive to helping me make some of these big changes, but it's in midlife that I'm doing this. You know, I was just going along, you know, my whole life. Right. Wow. And with, I mean, you wrote five books, correct? Is that correct? I have written six books. Um, books, Yeah. The first book um, is a spiritual fiction called God came to my garage sale. So that's where your first book came. Is that, that, that is the first book after losing everything, you know, this character, six books. Amazing. She has to have a garage sale and some spiritual miracles happen. And because you're almost a spiritual teacher, you're a high school. I mean, you have such an array of, I, I think you have so much Oh, so much to tell people, you know, well, but I mean, it's not going to be enough. We're going to, it's a, it's a journey. We all have a journey and sometimes we're compelled to share our journey um, because not only it's healing for us, but it's, it's also um, healing for other people. They can find inspiration. Um, This is just one. This is the first book of my five book series called true deceit, false love. And in that, um, I didn't plan on writing that five book series. Um, In fact, after I wrote the first book, um, and even though it was prominently endorsed by people in the abuse recovery community, Mm -hmm. I I went on to write within a very short time four other books related to this. And it's to bring awareness um, in a very general way to domestic violence, narcissistic abuse, parental Mm -hmm. alienation, which is a devastating form of of domestic violence. Can you go into a little conversation? I mean, domestic violence in itself is, is, can be significant or intimate partner violence. Yes. Intimate partner. um, Yes. That's what it's called. Intimate partner violence. Violence. Right. And, um, um, the trauma from that in itself is just, and it happens to both men and women. 
So mm-hmm. it is not a gender specific situation, mm-hmm. but you, you wanted me to elaborate a little on parental alienation and that, well, I mean, I just, I didn't, you know, I think the combination of, you know, the IPV or, um, whichever you'd like to talk about, because we're here, I'm here to try to highlight and discuss ways that you've been able to transition, right? So that trauma, those things you've written, and now you're able to talk about this because there is, I can only imagine, unfortunately, how many, I mean, you've done your probably your your research on what is it one in four or have some sort of abuse? Yeah, I actually put it on my website. There, there are numerous statistics, um, and and actually because unfortunately, um, you know, one of yeah, them. June first was a National Narcissistic Abuse Awareness Day. Mm-hmm. Um, just kind of like there's a hallmark holiday for anything. There's there's mm-hmm. you know lots of these different issues end up having a day of awareness because um, it really needs to be something that's more readily available to for people to understand and maybe connect the dots to their own experience. And they Mm -hmm. might realize, wow, I am in the middle of this. Because one one of the hallmarks of being in an abusive situation, um, and it's not just from my personal experience, but from a lot of research that I have done, is Mm -hmm. that so many times we don't know we're in it while we're in it. And it's when you finally have the Mm -hmm. straw that breaks the camel's back or, you know, some big revelation, some big big trauma where you, you know, then remove yourself from that situation just for your own safety. Um, It's then that you realize, wow, there were so many red flags along the way that I did not pay attention to and that many people don't pay attention to. And just like people that have had near-death experiences, they have flatlined and you know survived their medical trauma, but they have experienced something that is just unbelievable. And, and there are thousands of accounts um, that are very, very similar that people have experienced. You know, the same is true with just you know, emotional family trauma, it can be so devastating. I mean, it was devastating for me to, to leave a 27 year marriage, something that I thought would be forever. But at the same time, I almost didn't have a choice after some of the things that I learned. And so I made, I, I did make a choice. I suppose I could have stayed in it and I was pretty much threatened to stay in it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I knew that that wouldn't be healthy for me, nor would I be role modeling positive behavior for my adult children. But unfortunately I lost my adult children due to parental alienation. So they were older when this happened. So so what, how, how does, how does, so they've completely like alienated you? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. No, it's at some point that they, you know, sub hope at some point you're able to reconnect. Every targeted mom or dad has hope, you know, but the reality is, is that the brainwashing and the false narrative that's, right, been, right. you know, and the control and manipulation, whether it's through money threats, you know, uh, control of their electronics and their bills, that type of thing, you know, um, lots of times these adult children, you know, even if they realize there's parental alienation and they see good versus evil, they sometimes don't want the stress of having to make a change because it's extremely stressful in their lives to, to be like this. But if, if you know of a child, a younger adult child that thinks that everything is black and white, there's one good parent and one terrible parent. And if they have not communicated with that one parent they believe is terrible, um, for the most part, that could be the loving targeted parent that was just cut off as a as a means from the other parent to destroy that that parent. Right, they want right. revenge, you know. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, in our world, we have to deal with malevolent people and people that just don't always have the best interest. They will even sacrifice the well-being of their own children, you know, to, to hurt. I I can, I, I unfortunately can, can relate to my mother. She had, um, my father was, was in that narcissistic, you know, category, but she stayed with him all the way until, you know, he got sick. And, uh, I would say now, you know, she reflects on the, the, the years of, you know, she was there 50 years in it. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and she talks about it and we, but she's still not able to, I guess, get through that. Um, but it's but also yeah, a different see. generation. Your mother is older than, yes. than we are. And mm-hmm. we actually have platforms where we can get information about it or, yeah, or she did not no, get she support. Didn't. Right. Yeah. So it was a, a definitely a challenge for her. I, I feel yeah. for her. I mean, for us too, but I, I mean, I had years of therapy there, you know, I went, yeah. I learned my, you know, I, I learned my techniques. That's hence why I, I started this show because I, I feel like it needs to, things need to be talked about and we need to right. talk about conversations without um, feeling like a pill is going to be a conversation or everyone just has mental health. And it's like, well, right. there's more underlying. Everyone needs to have, um, to ta- have, you know, conversations and figure right. out better ways to be healthier, you know, and yeah. And actually just our conversation, you know, in this podcast can reach one person right. and that could change the trajectory of how they choose to handle you know, what they're going through. Right. And, right, and chances exactly. are there's a ripple effect because, you know, there are so many people like you and I that believe in goodness, believe in mm-hmm. our natural bodies, believe in um, the wonder of the world and positivity and how, you know, really our thoughts can control all sorts of things. I and, 100% and agree. so we're spreading the word. So we're creating that ripple effect, I believe. Oh, that's, I hope so. You know, every little, every one, one, you know, person on here and one conversation, I, I hope someone listens. Right. And they're having that and knowing that they're not alone, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I know that you, if you want to talk about one of the books or a story within your, you know, your, you know, a little bit more on your story, it's completely up to you, um, how you'd like to um, go further, but I know that you have a wealth of things to discuss. So, you know, well, you know, I, I'm open to talk with, talk about whatever you're interested <laughs> yeah, in yeah. talking about. I just, I just want to provide inspiration and hope to your viewers and listeners that they are not alone in, yeah. in whatever they are going through. Even if they don't completely resonate with the topics that I discuss, right, they might right. have their own situation in a workplace environment or with mm-hmm. something with health or something with money. You know, we all have challenges, but we have the power to choose to respond a certain way. And we need to all take time to do more reflection, you know, and meditation is extremely helpful. I will say that I struggled with meditation for the longest time. Mm -hmm. I had so much clutter in my mind and just was really hard to settle down to just kind of, um, you know, have like an, a, a blank slate to try to reflect. And sometimes there are people that can benefit from guided meditations where they right. actually follow someone else's um, direction and that type of thing. But I also find being in nature, which yep. even when I spent a lifetime in the Chicago suburbs, I was still, I loved the seasons. I loved the prairie. I loved the, the uh, Midwest, you know, landscape. Um, I feel like I'm someone that could be planted anywhere in the world and I could find beauty in it. I'm so mm-hmm. fortunate though, to be in the Caribbean because it's a different type of beauty that, you know, I can actually immerse myself in, like get into the ocean every day and, you know, take a walk in the rainforest every day. And that, that really is grounding for me. Oh, I, I can imagine how grounding it is. You're really one with the earth. But even if you are in the heart of the city or in the suburbs or on the West Coast or the East Coast or wherever you are, you can still um, find beauty in the world. Even if it's through looking out a window, yeah. you can still find beauty. And But I would say to your viewers and listeners, instead of listening to like a lot of s- specific stories that I have, you have the power within you to create the world you want to be, be the change that you want to see in the world. That famous quote, Um, you know, we have the power to take control of our lives. And sometimes though, it means making some hard choices about leaving these certain toxic kind of situations and people behind. Wow. What, I mean, you, you had gone through so much. What, what was like your turning point for you? Was it just that, you know, pivotal point that was just like, okay, this was enough, enough for myself. Yeah. 
yeah. and then you said, okay, I have to change. Yeah, I would say I definitely had a defining moment where, mm -hmm. you know, I was just a regular day out for pizza with my husband and one of my children. And I don't think it was intentional, but mm -hmm. there were confessions made and wrongdoings exposed. And, you know, if it was earlier on, I might've just brushed it off like I have right. always done, right, but you know what? It came to a point where I had connected so many dots that it yeah. was enough was enough. And, and actually I became very scared. Um, um, and because abusers do instill fear oh, in, of course. by what yeah. they do. That's kind of part of how they, they, they're able to control and manipulate. But I really, I guess that was my turning point. Um, but really it had been building for years and years and years. And then of course, after when I realized that parental alienation was part of this, where my loving mm -hmm. relationship with my kids and you know, so many of us parents, moms and dads, you know, our lives revolve around our kids. You know, we spend years and years raising them and trying mm -hmm. to instill good values and giving them great experiences and yeah. helping them to try to launch and, and, you know, be their own people. And, um, and it seemed like for many, many years, I, I was kind of um, fighting an opposite view of that type of thing, but I was still plugging along. And, but when you realize that, you know, you've been alienated from your children, almost like a cult, like brainwashing, oh. it, it's just shocking. It's just to your core. Um, and you try all sorts of things to reach out the normal way, visits, gifts, phone calls, yeah. texts, emails, whatever. Um, and then you know, at times with some real severe cases, abusers will even legally prevent you from connecting with your children, whether it's through orders of protection or whatever it is, um, where you are, you don't even have a choice unless you want to, you know, risk, you know, an arrest or something like that, even though it's all based on lies and false information. Um, the, you know, abusers will use the court systems whenever oh. they can, they will, they will continue and they will obsess over you. Even a decade after you have escaped their control, you can be slapped with, with more legal things That's that so sad. Yeah, it, it happens so much. to so many people. You've, you've overcome so much. Like I, I don't want to, you know, um, think I just, the now where you have come like, so that turning point how do you feel now that you've transitioned and, 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 you know, you've kind of come on the other side, how are you feeling? How are you doing? Um, and what has been your best, um, way of like healing? Well, that's a great question. Multifaceted, but very great question. Or, you yeah, know, you can um, put it in one point. It's up to you. No, no, but I, I, you know, I, I have come a long way, but I still think that anyone who has been through what I have been through or anything similar, you still have to remain vigilant. You still mm -hmm. have to pay attention because, um, you know, like I said, these abusers are obsessive and, you know, they are constantly plotting yet another way to get at you. And of course we read such devastating headlines at times with regards to a spouse murdering the other spouse or oh. their own, or their own children just to um in their sick twisted way of revenge so right. so i think that you know you always and i think i will always be on a healing journey and i will always have to be vigilant and you know in my, in my case my abuser has shown me that it doesn't matter if it's been almost a decade they will continue you know so mm -hmm. I think that that's being vigilant is something, unfortunately, we still have to deal with. And, and the truth, though, eventually comes out. I mean, with anything, it seems the truth eventually prevails. Um, but I would say, you know, I've been very fortunate because of where I was at the stage in my professional life that I was close to retirement. Mm -hmm. And um, so that that's something like so many other people have been convinced to quit their jobs or go on disability or, or, you know, be completely dependent on their abuser, you know, mm -hmm. so that they feel like they have no way out. Mm -hmm. um, so I had some things working in my favor. I also a very close friend of mine that I, 
you know, enjoyed being around and traveled a lot with, he is now my life partner. And so oh, he really gets it. Uh, so I have found love and happiness oh, again, without even looking for it. Um, and um, at That's all, great. you know, because um, so many people that are in that experience domestic violence end up in yet another domestic violence situation with similar personality disordered individuals, uh, mm. because that is what they know. But right. it's important to do, like I said, the, the deep dive and look into your own family interactions and generational traumas and, and, you know, what, you know, what kind of molded you into an over empath or an overgiver or someone that would tolerate, you know, be a good target for, for an abuser. It, so, it's, you know, you're, you're being a good person, but I, I it is that they, they almost look for the ones that are the most sympathetic and the most yeah. loving, right? That's, it's like, right. You, you are definitely, the psychology will show you. And unfortunately yeah, I wish it wasn't like that, but yeah, you are definitely chosen before they, you know, they, they're out. It's like a predator and a prey. They really oh, are looking for the weakest link. And not that you are a weak individual. You're just someone who has had some other kinds of losses and traumas that they will capitalize on. And so it's just, you know, it's yeah. very hard for good, loving, um, sane, healthy people to think like a criminal because that's not how we are wired. We're not. Right. Wired that is that. not how we were taught. That's not who yeah. we are. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I still believe though, even after everything that I have gone through and so much that I have read that so many other people have gone through, I still believe in honesty and goodness and uh, goodwill towards others. And I'm a little more discerning about who I let in my life. Um, or who I keep in my life, but that, that setting up is like a healthy boundary. The boundaries. Not, oh, I was just about to say boundaries. I'm a, yeah, it's not about it's them. A, yeah, you know, like boundaries. if I, I chose, like there's some people in my life that I have chosen. I do not want in my life. I do. It is not bringing me joy, happiness. Mm -hmm. I see so many of the similar abusive tactics. I just, it's not for me, but it's, if, if I have made some of those choices, it's not that I don't love those people. Um, even a family member, it's not that I don't love them and in, will always hold a special place in my heart. But the reality is that I can't subject myself to more and more abuse because mm -hmm. I, I need to value myself. No one else will do that for me except myself. So. I, I could not agree with you more. I think it's even more important for people to value themselves. You know, I don't think that we have, um, not everyone, I guess as empaths or those sensitive ones, we're not willing to look and say, it's okay. You know, um, yeah. I very much so appreciate you being on the show. I mean, there's so much more, I think we could even dive into, um, with sure. the trauma and the domestic violence since you, um, but would you like to leave the audience um, before you go with a small tip of, of your healing or prior to that, or would you like to discuss a little bit of your career as a school teacher? You know, well, my career as a school teacher was just one of the most enjoyable things. Because you were in Chicago had. area, right? I so was in the Chicago Chicago suburbs and I yeah, taught yeah. for 35 years, mostly at the high school level. Mm -hmm. um, but, and one thing just about how I was as a teacher, I wasn't someone that, you know, stood up in front of the class imparting facts and knowledge. Mm -hmm. I was the kind of teacher that looked at each individual an adjunct school. professor. Sorry about that. Awesome. Well, I was an, I was a high school teacher for 35 years and 12 of those years, I was an adjunct graduate school Wonderful. professor and Amazing. actually in both different venues with different age groups, I did more about looking at individual people as learners and trying to give them the permission to explore and investigate on their own that, you know, people can present information to you, but you need to do some critical thinking on your own. And, and that's where some real learning comes. Oh. And so that's the kind of teacher that I was. Um, but as far as just the, um, to impart any final thoughts for your audience, I would really just say, 
you know, you are a loving, beautiful human being. And, you know, stay true to your values and your integrity. And it is a very healthy practice. Um, and hopefully you don't have to go through trauma that will induce this, but mm -hmm. that you could take a look at your life and make some decisions about all sorts of things, who you want to spend time with, who are people in your life that you should maybe go no contact with or low contact, who are people that you are drawn to be with and maybe you know, move towards that. Look at where you are living and make some decisions. Hey, is this where I want to spend the rest of my life? Or should I go explore some other options for myself? People need to look at their careers or their jobs and ask themselves if it's fulfilling. Now, of course, I know many of us have to have our, our day jobs or whatever, but you know, our nine to five or whatever it's called, um, because we need to put food on the table. But at the same mm -hmm. time, um, we should give ourselves permission to explore some other options because, you know, money isn't everything, you know, um, buying this or that or living here or there isn't everything, you know, and I learned that the hard way when I lost everything after after leaving um, my marriage right. after 27 years, you know, I, I had so much safety and security, but it was all false. Mm -hmm. And so you, you never know, um, how strong you can be until you're, you're put into a situation, but I just want to leave your audience with hope that, you know, they can, you know, they can make changes in their lives and that's okay. And it's okay to put yourself first. It's not, um, a selfish thing by any means, you know, it's kind of like put your oxygen mask on first and then help the person next to you. And it's so hard for some of us to see that. I mean, I know just as, per, you know, as you're as an educator, me as a provider of health, like we almost don't want to do that or even as moms. Right. And you, you almost like you're instilled to kind of not realize that you have to help yourself because you can't help anyone if you're not available, you know, if you're not able Right. And you want to encourage others to help themselves, you know, so like one thing with my adult children, I always try to instill self-sufficiency, follow your own passions, don't rely on everyone where, you know, abusers want the opposite. They want you dependent. They want right. to take away your freedoms. They, mm -hmm. and they want you to be happy, you know, even though you you know, are, are stifled and you can't mm. grow to be the person that you are meant to be. So, mm. you know, there's a lot of hope for, for all of us. We just need to stay true to our, our positive values and make some, make some decisions about our lives. You are so versed in what you say, and I appreciate your time. I would love for the audience to be able to reach you. Um, I know your first book is God came to my garage sale. Would you recommend them to read that as your first book and how can they reach you on, uh, otherwise? Sure. Well, actually I, you know, I'm not on social media because I okay. wanted to spend more time in nature and okay. enjoying That's my funny. island as well as writing, but I do have a website, which is www.godcametomygaragesale.com. Dot com And there you can read about me, you could read about the various books, you know, the six books I've written myself, as well as the five books that I have co authored, um, as part of anthologies, um, you can under the happening section, um, you can tune into this podcast or many other podcast interviews that I've done, mm -hmm. um, as far as magazine articles I've written or book signings and that type of thing. So, you know, my You're website, is, <laughs> You're my a lot website of is the best place to, to, um, to, to check things out. And then my books are all on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. I'm with Balboa Press which is a division of Hay House. Hay House, oh, here. wonderful. Yeah, so that's who I am with. So you can even go on that website and uh, check out the books. And if money is tight for you, which it is for a lot of people right now, um, e-versions of the books are $3.99 online. So well, I'm... some libraries are carrying the books now. And, oh, yeah. You know, 
It's my book is in bookstores all across um, the nation and Europe and the Caribbean. So, well, I am so grateful for, you know, your spiritual teachings, your, your time and kind of bringing a little bit of faith and love to like others, like, so that they can have a little hope, you know, yeah. wherever they are um, in their journey, whether it's, you know, in the beginning of their stage, or they just need to hear a little bit of um, positivity. So thank yeah. you so much again for your time. Well, and thank you for what you do and for having this wonderful platform. You know, the mindfully integrative platform is just fantastic. It makes so much sense especially now. So thank you for what you are doing. And I, I am glad you saw value in what I'm doing. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you again. And those watching, like I said to you, make sure you find a mindful way each and every day and you have a beautiful day, whether it's a day or night. Thanks again. And we'll talk with you soon. Enjoy the next episode.